Chapter 7, start with 7.1, do a review of functions. So remember, this right here is in function notation, where my y value is written as f of x, f of x just means y, and the function rule is 3x plus 2. We could do what's called a mapping, which is these ovals, where I can plug things in for x, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 5, and I get out negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 2 is negative 4. Plug in 1, I get out negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 5. And I plug in a 5, I get out 17. Uh, these can be written as a table as well. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 5. I just pick these numbers kind of randomly, just whatever I wanted to pick. I get out negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, and 17. Remember, all of the x values in here, we call the domain. So the domain is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 5. And over here is the same. That's the domain. It's all the x values. The x values are the domain. The y values are the range. Now, technically, for this function, the domain and the range would be all real numbers. So I could have picked anything for x. But because I just picked these ones specifically, we'll just talk about these specific domain and ranges. Um, the domain can also be written as a set with this little wing bracket where right now the domain is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 5. Like I said, it is technically all real numbers, but I'm just looking at this specific part of the domain. And the range is the y value, so negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, 17. And the whole function itself has ordered pairs. The whole f of x function has an ordered pair that has a domain and a range, negative 2, negative 4. That's one of my ordered pairs, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 2, 1, 5, and 5, 17. Quick review of functions. This should also be review. We can add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And so here's my f of x that we just had, and here's my g of x. So if I want to do f plus g of x, the way that's written is really just saying do f of x plus g of x. And so this can become um, this plus this is 3x plus 2 plus x squared minus 4. I just combine my like terms, and I get x squared plus 3x minus 2. If I want to do subtraction, f of x minus g of x, you have to be a little bit more careful. I'm doing 3x plus 2 minus x squared minus 4. And this subtraction has to distribute. So it's going to become negative x squared plus 3x plus 6. And this is really a plus 2 and this is really a plus 4. And the positive 2 and the positive 4 combine to give me a positive 6. This multiplication has two binomials, two terms, and both are two two term expressions. So I'm going to distribute. 3x times x squared is 3x to the third. 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And I'll put that in standard form where the powers are decreasing. about this is off. This should have just been a negative 12x, and not negative 12x squared. And then division, now we've technically learned how to do long division, but if I'm doing f of x divided by g of x, for now, all I want to talk about with division is what x can't be. That would set up like this. We have 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 4, I'm sorry, x squared minus 4. Now you have to remember with division, we're not allowed to divide by 0. So x squared minus 4 cannot be 0, which means that x squared cannot be 4 if I add a 4 to both sides, which means that x cannot be plus or minus 2 if I square root both sides. So the only new thing for division we're going to talk about is when you set this up, you have to talk about what x can't be x cannot be positive or negative 2, because if x is positive or negative 2, the bottom becomes 0, and we can't divide by 0. We are allowed to have 0 on top. Having 0 on top isn't a problem, but x can't be that plus or minus 2. So really this, for now, is how we're going to set up that division.
something like that. Composition is what's sort of new, but actually not really. We talked about it way back in chapter two a little bit. This open circle we read as compose. I know right now it looks like fog of x, but we're really saying f composed with g. What that means, I'm going to do f of g of x. I'm going to take this g of x function and then plug it in to f. So I'm going to take x squared minus 4 and plug it in right here. I'm doing f of x squared minus 4, which becomes 3 times x squared minus 4 plus 2, which is 3x squared minus 12 plus 2, which is 3x squared minus 10. composition where I'm taking one thing and plugging it into another. That's what that open circle means. It means I'm doing composition. So here in this next one, I'm going to do g of f of x. So that's the same. I'm just take this open circle and make it a parenthesis. It's g of f of x. I'm always doing the inside plugged into the outside. So I'm going to take f and plug it in to g. The way that looks makes no sense in the end g of f of x, so I'm really doing g of 3x plus 2, which becomes 3x plus 2 squared minus 4. This 3x plus 2 just got plugged in right here. Now, oh my goodness, you have to understand, 3x plus 2 squared is not 9x squared plus 4. You cannot do that. 3x plus 2 squared is 3x plus 2 foiled. 3x plus 2 times 3x plus 2 minus 4, which is 9x squared plus 6x plus 6x, so plus 12x plus 4 minus 4, or 9x squared plus 12x. There's composition. We can practice and skip that. Practice some more composition really quick. If you want to fast forward through this, it might be worthwhile if you think you're okay here. But f of g of x is really f of g of x. So I'm going to take this and plug it in here. And I get 2 times negative x squared minus x minus 3. There's negative 2x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now, if I want to do f of g of 1, I have a number here instead of having a variable. This is really doing f of g of 1. Well, a lot of ways this can be easier, because I can just find g of 1 first. g of 1 is negative 1 squared minus 1, which is negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. g of 1 is negative 2. So now I'm doing f of negative 2, which I'm going to come up here, is negative 7. So that just works out to a simple number, negative 7. But the other way that I could do the same problem, it's really nice. Since I've already worked out f of g of x, doing f of g of 1 means I can just take this 1 and plug it in here. And I get negative 2 times 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 3, which is negative 2 minus 2 minus 3 which is negative 7. Because I found the rule for f of g of x, finding f of g of 1 or f of g of 5 or f of g of a trillion would just require plugging those numbers in to this function. Okay, I'll do it the other way around now. g of f of x. Well, I'm going to take the f of x and plug it into g. So I'm going to take 2x minus 3. I'm going to take this and plug it in here and here. So I get negative. 2x minus 3, and that's all in parentheses squared, minus 2x minus 3. Well, that becomes negative 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3 minus 2x minus 3. This boils into negative 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. I distributed this negative to make that a plus sign right there. So I now have negative 4x squared plus 12x minus 9.
minus 2x plus 3. That all combines to get negative 4x squared plus 10x minus 6. Now if I wanted a g of f of 1, I could either plug a 1 in right here, or I could find f of 1 first. f of 1 is negative 1. Just plug that in up here. Then I can do g of negative 1. And g of negative 1 is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. g of negative 1 is 0. Does that work out? Negative 4 plus 10 is 4. Just 6 minus 6 is 0. Yes. Okay, keep going. H and K are functions with the tables that are given below. We just did composition with rules when we knew what H and K were, like what H is 3x plus 2 or something. But now we have a table. If I want to find H of K of X here, I want to think about how H and K translate to each other. So I do the inner thing first. I do K of X first. Well, here's my K of X function. I know that 2 goes to 8. Well, then to do the h part, I want to find 8 over here. 8 goes to 4. This is really saying that h of k of 2 comes out to 4. So let me show that with all these examples. 4 is going to 6. k of 4 equals 6. So then I do h of 6. h of 6 this out here, that also comes out to 6. So h of k of 4 equals 6. Next one, 7 goes to negative 3. Negative 3 doesn't go anywhere. So that tells me that h of k, I can run it either way, h of k of 7 is undefined. 11 goes to 5, 5 goes to 1, so h of k of 11 is 1. And finally, 5 goes to 1. 1 doesn't go anywhere. So h of k of negative 5 is also undefined. The idea here is that the domain of k, and the domain of k was 2, 4, 7, points to the range of k, and the range of k goes to 8, 6, negative 3, 5, 1. There's a domain of range of k. But the range of k, the y values, turn into the x values of our outer function, h. Now since I'm doing h of k of x, which looks like hawk of x, since I'm doing h of k of x, the range of k, the y values of k, become the domain of h. So these all went here. But then 8 went to 4, 6 went to 6, and 5 went to 1. And those are the only things that went anywhere. Everything else in the domain of k never made it all the way to the range of h. Because even though 7 here, 7 went to negative 3, negative 3 didn't have any place to go. So it didn't make it. The key idea here is that we kind of cover with these writings down here, so I'll pull it down. The key idea is, if you think about h of k of x, and the range of the inner function, which is k, because we're doing h of k of x, the range of the inner function becomes the domain of the outer function, in this case is h. Your book shows that a little bit differently. We've talked about tables with f and g. But your book is going to give you lists of sets like this, which we talked about before. So here, if f has the point 2, 6, f has the point 2, 6. If the input was 3, the output was 8. Input 3, output 8. Domain 5, range 0. Domain 5, range 0. And this would be a good time to pause and try to work ahead of me, but if you want to find g of f of x, I need to find g of f of 2 and g of f of 3, and g of f of 5, and g of f of negative 1, and g of f of 4. So that's everything in the domain of f. Well, 2 goes to 6, 6 goes to 0, this comes out to 0. And I'm doing 3, 3 goes to 8, 
It doesn't go anywhere. This one's undefined. Five goes to zero, zero goes to one. This comes out to one. And negative one goes to negative two. Negative two doesn't go anywhere, so this one's undefined. And four. Four goes to negative three, negative three goes to two. This comes out to two. So this is really saying like here, we know that g of f of four can end up being two. Finally, I'll do frog of x. I'm doing the f's and the g's first, because g is my inner function. So f of g of over the g value of that's 6, 6, 1, 5, negative 3, 0. Six goes to zero, zero goes nowhere, and that's undefined. One goes to four, four goes to negative three. Five goes to four, four goes to negative three. Negative three goes to two, and two goes to six. Right here, two goes to six. And zero goes to one, and one doesn't go anywhere, so that's undefined. Beautiful. That's how most of your homework looks for these things. The last thing I want to talk about is how to handle a problem like this. I'm doing A of B of X, where here's A and here's B. This is still composition, and that looks weird. It's like A of X. It's like there's no numbers in there anywhere. How can we do math without numbers and this stuff? Well, the numbers are over here. I'm doing A of B of X, so this is going to plug in here and here, so it becomes 2 times X minus 5 squared minus 3 times x minus 5 plus 1. I foil this out, which I can do pretty quick. You should be able to also. It's always this number squared goes here, and this number times 2 goes there. Whenever you, whenever you square something, it'll always go in that pattern if you have something to a second power. And this is minus 3x plus 15 plus 1. So I have 2x squared minus 20x plus 50 minus 3x plus 15 plus 1. 2x squared minus 23x plus 66. Not 1, 56, but 66. Good. Remember, you probably have a video quiz to watch. And to take, sorry, you should probably take your video quiz. I know that was a long one. They probably all will be this chapter because I'm gone. Deal with it.